Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in and in this lesson we will be creating the game over scene for the quick play game mode. Make sure you save this scene by pressing Ctrl plus S on your keyboard and then we are free to go to the game over scene. First we will need to add a background and you need to find it in the sprites. When you find it, simply drag and drop it into the scene. Since it's too big, we will reduce the scale to 0 0.6. And after that, drag it into place. We can also change the name to background. And of course, we are going to change the sorting layer as well. After that, we will need two buttons. The first one is going to be the button that can take us back to the main menu. Once you find that sprite, drag it into the scene. And now it's behind the background, so we also need to add a sorting layer to this. However, it's going to be the foreground sorting layer. It's also too big and the size is going to be reduced to 0.6 as well. We can also change the name to main menu button and adjust the position. In order for this button to work, we will also need to add a polygon collider to it. So click on add component, go to physics 2D and choose polygon collider 2D. Since we didn't have any buttons that take us to the main menu, we will need to create a new script. Right click on the scripts folder and create a new C sharp script. We can name this script main menu button script. Open it up in Visual Studio. Since it's going to be changing scenes, we will need to implement the scene manager. We will not be needing these methods and instead we are going to have the on mouse down method. And what we want to do once the button is pressed, we want the scene manager to load another scene. And the scene that we want to load is called the home scene. Make sure you save this. And if we go back to Unity, we need to select the main menu button and drag this script onto it. Let's see if it works. Okay, after that we'll need another button and that one is going to be the retry button. It's going to be the same procedure again. You can adjust the position however you want. And of course we are going to need a polygon collider as well. However, this time we will not be needing a new script for this button, since this button is going to be doing the same thing the quick play button does in the home scene. So we can just use that script. Select your retry button and attach this script to it. Now that this is out of the way, we can finally move to this core game object. 
It's going to be a similar system like we had in the Color Switch game. First we are going to need a 3D text object. And we can name this one Current Score. Right now it's behind the background, so let's add a sorting group component to this. Now we can simply select the foreground sorting layer on this text. After that we'll increase the font size to 250 and we'll reduce the character size to 0.05 again. We will change the default text to 0 and simply drag it into position. We will need another one just like this. That means we can simply duplicate this by pressing Ctrl plus D on our keyboard. However, the name is going to be different, of course. This one is going to be the high score. And we need to drag it into its position. Now everything looks fine, however, this score text doesn't have any functionality. So we'll need a new script that handles that. The script is going to copy the current score from the player prefs and then it will compare it to the high score. If the current score is higher than the high score, then it will become the new high score. And the high score of course is going to be saved if we exit the game as well. So right click on our scripts folder and create a new c -sharp script. And we can name this one quick game over score script. The script is going to be attached to the main camera since it's always there. And now, let's open it up in Visual Studio. This script will only need the start method, so the update method is going to be deleted. Before we begin, we'll need a bunch of variables. First, we'll need two public game object variables. The first one is going to be called current score. And the second one is going to be called high score. After that, we'll also need two private variables. The type of them is going to be text mesh. We can name the first one CS text, and the second one can be called HS text. Once the depth is done, we need to target these in the start method. So CS text is going to be equal to current score dot get component text mesh and hs text is going to be equal to high score dot get component text mesh after that is done we want to update the text on the current score and we are going to grab a copy of the player preps value for the current score so cs text dot text is going to be equal to player prefs dot get int and the key of the int that we want to get is current score however of course this is an integer and we need to convert it After we got the current score, we want to check whether that score is higher than the high score. And for that we are going to be using an if statement. So if the current score that's stored in the player prefs is greater than the high score that's stored in the player prefs. Right now we don't have any value set for the high score, so this will mean that the current score is indeed greater and for the first time that we play the game, the high score will become the current score. So that will automatically create an entry in the player prefs named high score. If the current score is greater than the high score, we want player prefs to set int of high score
to whatever value is in the current score. To get the current score, again, we need to write player press. The only thing that is left to do is to update the high score text like we did here with the current text. So we'll type age as text dot text equals to player preps dot get int and the int that we want to get this time is the high score. Of course we'll need to convert this to a string and everything should be working fine. If we go ahead and save this and go back to Unity, we simply need to select the camera and attach these game objects right here. So let's see if it actually works. Ok, so the current score seems to be working fine, however the high score is still 0. So let's go back to the script and see where we made a mistake. It should be a mistake in this statement, because it never gets to update the high score. Oh, right here I made a typing mistake. I typed current instead of current. I'm sorry for this and fixing this should also fix the problem. Save the script again and everything should be ready for testing again. Ok, it seems to be working fine now, however let's see if it will still keep the high score even after we exit the game. Yep. And finally let's try to beat this high score to see if that works. The score seems to be working perfectly and once again thank you for tuning in.